morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. We're in the book of Hebrews. Having missed last week, let's just review for just one moment. To whom is he writing? Jewish Christians. Jewish Christians. A church or churches. They were Jews of all kinds of stripes, like Hellenistic Jews who had come out of that and were more uh, what we call European. Of course, there's the, the Jews that wanted to go back to Moses, and that seemed to be the problem. And yet, I think, and that's I use the word on purpose, I think a lot of us, or maybe most of us at a time, early in our salvation thought about going back. Thought about some things, some temptations we had and enjoyed. Uh, I, I think it's always a temptation. Because of whom? Satan. Satan is real. He is alive. And he's drawing and he makes things look more beautiful than they really are. And whom does he leave alone? Nobody. Nobody. We all we all face it. And so as we, we look at this chapter, and I, I don't mind telling you, I have really wrestled with this chapter and two or three verses in it to come to a, some uh, conclusions. As he begins chapter 3, Therefore, holy brethren, who are the holy brethren? Those are believers, genuine believers in, in, the, in the particular place. They are partakers of a heavenly call, calling, considering Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession. And of our confession means saying the same thing. Now, what is an apostle? A call to know Jesus. Pardon? Somebody who saw Jesus. Deeper. Deeper. He's a, he's a sent one. He's a sent one who represents the sender. The one who sent him. That that's 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 what an apostle is. What is a high priest? The only one who can do what? Go into the holy place. Go into the holy place and approach God in behalf of the people. Now, consider Jesus who was what? Both of these things, therefore, all we need. The apostle, the one sent who represents the sender, who else could do that? As we studied the book of John a few uh, months ago, remember constantly, he, he constantly said, I have come from heaven. I am sent from God. I am, that is over and over and over. The whole book of John is, Jesus came from God with God's message. He is the, not a apostle. There are a apostles and there are the apostles. There's only one apostle. And that's Jesus who only could represent the one who sent him. The high priest, only one. And it says um, that he was faithful to him who appointed him, which means he did everything God wanted him to do as Moses also was in his house. Now, why would this guy bring up Moses to these people? Because he was comparing Jesus to Moses. They were similar but not the same. Right. Moses, I suppose, if, if, we, if we could Americanize him, Abraham would be George Washington. Moses would be Abraham Lincoln who freed the ethics. I mean, these are the most important guys there are uh, to, the, to these Jewish people. And, and to us, they're so important that we read about them and learn about the glory of God. So Moses was also faithful in all his house, all he was called to do. House here represents people. 
as he would count it worthy of more than Moses, Jesus would count it more than Moses, so much as the builder of the house has more honor than the house. The people of the house, the builder of the house has more honor. Uh, I look back to uh, 2 Samuel. I can find it. Yeah. And uh, David was going to build a house for the Lord, and the Lord is much said, Do I really need a house to represent me? He was going to allow it, but 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 is God bigger than a house? Well, of course, to the Jews, he became the house. Uh, but eventually, he said to David, I will appoint a place for my people Israel to plant them. They live their own place, not be disturbed. And from the day I commanded judgments to be over my people Israel, I will give you rest for your enemies. The Lord declares that you will make a house. The Lord will make a house for you. Talking for David about his grandson, grandson, great, great, Jesus. And the New Testament talks about us being a house, living stones in a house. So when he talks about house, he's talking about us. Every house is built by someone who is building the house of which we are part of. Quite obviously, Christ, Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit. The builder of, the, of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were spoken later. But Christ was faithful as a son over his house. You compare the two. A servant, a son. Who's the most important? That's a rhetorical question, isn't it? That, that he's saying to, to these Jews, as high as you put Moses in your mind, in your heart, Jesus is so far above him, there's really no contrast. A servant, a son, they're not even connected, though they live in the same house. But Christ was faithful to the son of his house, in whose house we are, if, if we hold fast our confidence and the boast of our hope firm until the end. Holding forth to the end is proof of what? Our faith, our confidence in Him. If we hold forth. He's not saying to me that if you don't hold forth, I got you. He's saying if you are saved, if you have faith, it'll hang in there. It will stay with you. Just as the Holy Spirit said, today if you hear my voice, and we go back now to the leaving Egypt, do not harden your hearts as when they provoke me in the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tried me by testing me, saw my works for 40 years. God says, therefore I was angry with this generation. I said, they always go astray in their heart. They do not know my ways, and I swore in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. Rest is an interesting word I could not figure out. Uh, let me see if I can... The Greek word is... Kataposin. 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 I'm going to ask my brother, who, who knows all there is, <laughs> when, when I when I retired, I gave my library to young Greek, <laughs> and my Greek lexicon, which would have given me all of this, is gone. I don't know all the words. This guy does. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what that means, Bill. Okay, the, the normal word for rest is pao, and uh, that literally means the state of resting. But here he uses kataposis, which is only used in the Hebrew uh, letter. 
In fact, it's used eight times in, in, uh, in this letter. And it literally means the place of rest. The place of rest. What's the place of rest? It is the place where God resides. Wherever God resides, you enter into that rest. You are in His presence. That's what it's referring to. Good. So you will not enter my place where I give you rest. Now, the first danger that we talked about is these people was the danger of drifting. When do you drift away from a closeness with God? What is it you don't do and you drift away? Fellowship. Relationship. Fellowship. Relationship is, is certainly one. Stay in the Word. Stay in the Word and it starts with a P. Pray. 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 Have you ever had periods like that? You don't have to answer it because I know you have. <laughs> Even preachers go through cold, cold spells where the prayer is just what is necessary and expected. Uh, the second doubt is belief. <coughs> they disbelieved God could do what He promised. Now, I, I, can, I can be corrected here. What gave them freedom from Egypt? God, God, God. God's leadership. Faith. With a what? Lamb. The blood of a lamb. We call it Passover. And they, and they left Egypt. God did that and led them out. Now, <clears throat> We're all born in sin. It was David right when he said, In sin my mother conceived me. In iniquity I was born. We're born in... That's Egypt. Now, when we accept the Lamb, we go out and we leave that part. But we have a time, and maybe it's just me. When I was saved... I knew something wonderful happened to me, but I did not know what because I did not know the Scripture. What came into my life that, that told me something? Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. I did not know that. Did you? Immediately? No. No, no that comes from Bible study and all. But with my background, I still had doubts. Let me confess to you, sometimes they still come. Sometimes they still come. You don't have that. You don't have any doubts? No. Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. Certainly we have doubts because we have an enemy that puts into our heart doubts. Doubt. There's so much of this that, that is such a mystery. Where was God before creation? What did He do? There. I don't know. Is this the first creation? I don't know. I mean, there's so much mystery out there that makes us wonder about this. And I don't mean to create doubts, but they are there. You know, the Israelites leaving Egypt are a lot like Krishna. As they were leaving, they were all happy. They now had their freedom. But their mind was also turned back to where they came from. Exactly. Exactly. Just as I was when I was saved. Doubts and not understanding. It was two years after I was saved that I heard a Sunday school teacher say that Jesus was the substitute for my sins. <clears throat> I was constantly afraid I would do that and leave salvation. 
three or four times in those two years, I went forward and <coughs> rededicated my life. Do you remember when people used to do that? What I really meant was, I'm not going to tell you, preacher, but this is really, I'm hoping to be saved again. We go through that. Not understanding. They went through that. In all this disbelief, they did not understand and they were miserable because the world is a miserable place to live if you're not at continually at peace with God. It's a miserable place to live. <coughs> it mistreats you constantly. I'd like to ask you a question. Yes, sir. In the beginning when he said, let us make man in our image, who is there? When you say, let us make man in our image, uh, God, Jesus, and the Holy God, Spirit. God, Jesus, uh, a holy council. Yeah, all three of them. Yeah. Yeah. Father, God, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And, and probably others, angels, probably, yeah. probably a whole council. But surely, surely the Trinity. Uh, but the word Elohim said, Elohim simply means a spirit. A spirit, not necessarily a human. And so in, in the wilderness area of disbelief, and that's that's a time that Christians do until they begin to study and understand some of the word, then they move out in out into rest. Now, one of the questions on here, and it's worded badly. What was that, Bill? Uh, I, I left out two words. <coughs> what did Canaan mean to the delivered from Egypt? It says Hebrews, and I meant to say to the Hebrews. What did Canaan mean? It was a rest, a place of rest, not heaven. You know, forget all the ne Negro spirituals that, that talked about crossing. When I was uh, younger, man, I could sing and I loved to sing. And I lived music and revivals and there was a song that I loved. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. <coughs> Jesus died on my sins to atone. When the darkness I see, He'll be there for me. I won't have to cross Jordan. As if Jordan were dead. It's not. It's like baptism. And then there is life. There is rest. But we're not in heaven. But still doubts and fears are here. Are they not? Amen. They are. We don't understand it all, but we understand enough, amen, amen, that we can have faith in what we understand and know that God is taking care of what we do not understand. And so this rest they entered into is not heaven. It's a rest like you and I have now. We live in a world, but it's not conquered. And it has ups and downs. For instance, when they entered into Canaan, there was a great faith movement that destroyed Jericho. You remember that story? The next thing, there was a little city up there that I call Ai. Now what happened to the Ai? They said, we don't need God to do this. We can send a few guys up there and they'll take care of it. What happened to those few guys? They got whooped. They got whooped bad. They came running back. You see, that's us. There are things we can do, great things by faith, but there are also things we try to do without God that turn into terrible things. This is the life we live now. That's what Canaan represents for them. Now, verse 12. Is a, was a rest is a wrestling match for me. I uh, I have I have stayed awake at night. Take care, brethren, lest there should be any of you an evil, unbelieving heart in falling away from the living God. What can that mean?
if brothers, when he started up here, he, he called them holy brethren. And here he says brother. Is he talking about the same group? Well, what's he saying to them? Watch out or you lose your salvation? Yes. <clears throat> I'm a simple-minded guy. Here am I saved. I walk, 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 walk with God. And then I have a disappointment and I turn away from God unbelieving that He can do what He... Am I lost? Did I lose my salvation? No. An unbelieving heart. You ever been there? Your heart not as faithful? Not faithful. You find yourself doing things you wish you hadn't and shouldn't have. Falling away from the living God. Is it falling away from salvation? Or falling away from closeness and assurance? I mean, this is the thing you re that I wrestle with. I think it's worth wrestling. Can I lose my salvation? That's a question I need to know. Now, I, I'm well aware, well aware, that the Bible does not say, James, one saved always saved. I'm well aware that that's not a scriptural quote. But I keep remembering things like he that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. Cast out. What does that mean? I came to him. I haven't been as faithful as I should, but is he going to cast me out? Now, this, this is a stand I have to take. This is why I wrestle with it. And this is a stand I take because I do believe not scriptural, once they always say, our perseverance of the saints, however you want to put it, there is therefore no condemnation to them <coughs> who what? Believe. Who believe. Immediately or free. Whatever. Now that's <coughs> that's my stand. For it says we have become partakers of Christ. And here to hear it again, if if we hold fast the beginning of our assurance until the end, holding to the end is proof of salvation. <clears throat> if you can't, if you don't, if you give up and go back into that life, I'm still thinking out of 1 John, I think it's chapter 2, they went out from us because they were never of us. They showed they're not saved by leaving. Now that, that's, that's my take. <coughs> and it does say that at the end times that Jesus as he reviews or judges the people they say, didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we do all these miracles in your name? And their reply, the reply they will receive is, depart from me, I never knew you. Yeah, I never knew you. <clears throat> but we become partakers, brethren, in Christ. If we hold fast, Now, during my time, I never quit believing who Jesus was and what He did. Though my life wasn't sure. <clears throat> I wasn't sure because I did not know the Scripture. Now, how many of you started out, when I was saved, I understood the Scripture? <laughs> <laughs> you still don't? 
<laughs> no, none of us do. We're still learning. I am learning. Every time when I sit down to study this, something pops out at me and I said, man, I should have known that. Even some of you dodos know that. <laughs> so he says, today if you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Don't let your hearts become hard. If you can hear his voice, don't go against him. So sometimes what he wants you to do is not what you want to do. That right, wrong, or sideways. Sometimes I have something I want to do. I have a temptation that is so fierce. I remember a couple that I was dealing with and she had uh, committed adultery and she said to me, but it seemed so right. I love the man and it seemed so right. It may seem right. The temptation may be so strong, but does that tear you loose? <clears throat> For who provoked him when they had heard? Indeed, did not all those who came out of Egypt led by Moses, with whom he was angry, For 40 years. Was it not those who sinned whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter into his rest, into Canaan, into his rest? Now, there are three rests. They rested when they came out of bondage, they rested in Canaan. There is a rest that remains, which is what? The ultimate rest, which, which is heaven. Now these people were disobedient. So we see that they were not all able to enter because of unbelief. Does this mean they died and went to hell? Let's... In, uh, in Numbers, God is talking with God. Moses is talking with God about these people. And he said once to God, if you're going to blot them out, then blot me out also. In Numbers 14, 16, let me read a few verses. Because the Lord could not bring His people into the land which He promised then by oath, therefore he slaughtered them in the wilderness. But now I pray thee, let the power of the Lord be great. This is Moses. I pray that the power of the Lord be great, just as you prepared, as declared. The Lord is slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, forgiving iniquity and transgression. If he will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, the third and fourth generations. Verse 19, pardon. Pardon, I pray, the iniquity of this people according to the greatness of your loving kindness. Just as thou hast also forgiven this people from Egypt until now, and the Lord said, verse 20, I have pardoned them. That's God. A loving God who understands and doesn't back away. <clears throat> I have pardoned them according to your word, but they're not going to get the rest. They're not going to get Canaan. You see, there's there is a cost of unbelief. Some of the most miserable people I've ever known. Or Christians who just seem to fight against everything you wanted to do in church. <clears throat> I can remember a woman, and everybody knew it, and when she died at her funeral, 
I dare to say, now God can deal with her face to face. <laughs> Even her family knew what I was talking about. She just was constant in our face about anything. If we swept, it needed to be mopped. You know, just if the piano is here, it ought to be there. It just there are people that are just miserable and put their miserable miserality on other people. God will deal with that. They never get rest. They never see Canaan. But they will see heaven. Now that's my take on this chapter. Anything you wish Bill had said? Any questions? Now those those that died in the wilderness, that was a generation that didn't do what he was supposed to do. But, but there were others that came forward. Yep. Okay. Now, what happened was everything was fine until they got ready to go over to the promised land. And twelve guys went over there. Remember? Ten of them said what? <laughs> even, even God can handle even God can't handle this. That's what they said. Even God can't handle this. Those folks are giants. We're not. Two guys said, if God wills. Who were those two guys? Joshua. Joshua, Joshua and Caleb. <coughs> And so God could not let a people go in that did not believe He could give them rest. That it was in His power. Now you and I know it was in His power doing it because they went in there. And they conquered eh, most of it. The, the whole generation died out. The whole generation. They never, they never went into rest. Never, never. The whole generation died out. But they never went over there. Never got in there. But number said God pardoned them. But numbers thirteen. If you read numbers thirteen thirty three, oh Father, they he didn't pardon them. That's why he wouldn't let them go and the rest. <laughs> Bill, did Moses go to rest? Moses. No, he did not. No. Why? Moses, no, no, no. What did he do that prevented him? He, uh, the rock. he hit the rock instead of touching. And Spirit. you're right, he disobeyed. And his act of disobedience. Disobedience? What is that word? <laughs> he refused to believe. Lack of faith. Yeah, he lacked faith. What God had told him, and that, <clears throat> that's that's what caused. I think he went beyond. Pardon? I think he went beyond in a human sense. He got mad and hit the rock. Yeah, he did. And that wasn't necessary because God already had. No, no. God said, "Speak to the rock." Right. And, but he didn't do what God said. Right. And not doing what God said is <coughs> sense. Yeah. Unbelievable. And while he was alive, he was not allowed to go into the promised land. Right. But on the mountain of transfiguration, when he met Jesus. It, yeah. Now, did he go to hell? No. no. How do you know he didn't go to hell? <laughs> because God wouldn't have put him out of hell to send him to the mountain of transfiguration. We see him again on the mountain of transfiguration. <clears throat> and in my mind, we see him again in the book of Revelation as the two witnesses. In my mind. In my theology. And that's that's not pure. <laughs> Somebody said that if uh, Moses had been a woman, they would have wandered in the wilderness 40 years. She just thought of us directions. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> no. Let's not touch that one. Because I can't ever remember asking directions. <laughs> and I got 100% recall. <laughs>
<laughs> they remember things that never happened. I remember one time going through Boston before there were interstates, and I got lost, and I couldn't find my way out of Boston. And my wife said, "Why don't you ask?" And I didn't. I find this pull up the side road. If my family had been, I would just cry. I would just bawl. So I just stubbornly found the first highway sign I take that says south, I'm on it. <laughs> but uh, that's, you're right. Everything we do, we ought to ask God for directions.